All right, how many children here in New York? We told you 62,000 approximately in the last uh, nine months or so. 12% of the immigration court's docket was children in May. Now that percentage is probably close to 15 or 16%. Beginning on August 13th of this year, the court stopped holding just five dockets a month and began holding a docket every day. Its nickname is the Surge Docket here in New York. In Florida, they're calling it the Rocket Docket. The court calls it the Priority Docket. In litigation that's happening in Seattle, they denied such a docket exists. I'm standing here as living witness, it does exist. Five organizations here in New York that had experience representing children mobilized and are there at court every day. We want to make sure that no child has to face the court completely alone. Every child that's coming on these surge dockets, that means usually someone who arrived after May 1, is seeing a lawyer. So we now know we have 3,500 children added to the court's work. The latest data here in New York is 4,400. Now, there is litigation. It was argued, a TRO, temporary restraining order, was argued on September 3rd in Seattle in federal court. The Northwest Immigrant Rights Group brought the action together with the ACLU and two other organizations saying that a child should have the right to appointed free counsel. Let me be clear that under the immigration statutes, the children have a right to counsel but they have no right to counsel at government expense. The litigation so far is being fought fiercely by the U.S. Attorney's Office. However, the very same day they were arguing the TRO, Attorney General Holder was speaking publicly, saying these children deserve counsel. On August 6th, I was invited to the White House, and I spoke with Vice President Biden and representatives of the pro bono community, two law firm leaders, pro bono coordinators, and corporate leaders. The message from the White House was, we want these children to have representation, but they are not conceding that it should be done at government expense. Even if the judge grants the TRO, many of the cases will be continuing, or children need help, even if the government's not actively, actively pursuing their immediate deportation. So trust me, we need you now, we'll need you tomorrow, and even if ultimately this litigation succeeds, I don't think it will be a final until it goes to the U.S. Supreme Court. So shall we anticipate two or three years of litigation over this issue? Um, you can make a tremendous difference. One study shows there's 500 times more likely to succeed if you're represented by counsel for a child. Why aren't child entitled to free counsel? Isn't this punishment, deportation, especially as Joe said, you might be facing the ultimate penalty. You might face death, death in your home country. Well, traditionally, the Supreme Court has held and continues to hold that immigration is civil. We use the phrase illegal immigrant or illegal alien in our media far too often. These are civil proceedings. It is not about illegality, unless you're going to consider all civil violations illegality. We tend to uh, refer to the people as irregular entrants or undocumented people. Um, I assure you there could be criminal charges brought against some people, but not usually against someone under the age of 16 who's incapable, incapable of forming the re requisite mens rea. So uh, we urge you to consider this work as really important, but understand that the work you're doing is civil defense. This slide is really important to me. It looks very simple, but I hope it's a, a, an image that will stick in your head. We have trained hundreds of pro bono lawyers. Yesterday I saw a Catholic priest in immigration court. He came to the door of our screening room and he said, can you help me? One of the judges sent me. He said, you know how to get an order out of family court. He said, I went to the family court and I looked at the, the court clerk and I said, you know this is about immigration. Why won't you help me? And I said, Father, with all due respect, it's not about immigration. When you go to the family court, when you're seeking some of the pre prerequisite findings in that family court, you are doing so at the direction of Congress, but as part of a child protection remedy. When you dare to walk into the hallowed, crazy, confusing, chaotic halls of a family court, and it, by the way, it might, in other states, it might be your might be called your district court, your supreme court, your, your ward court, your surrogate's court, your dependency court, whatever the name of your local court is, you're not there for an immigration remedy. You are there as a lawyer assisting a child to achieve child protection, stability, planning, and permanency. 
please know that although Congress wrote an immigration remedy that requires a family court predicate, and we're going to talk about that later in the program, your mindset of all of this work is tell your friends at a cocktail party, why are you helping all those illegal aliens, they might say. And you'd say, I'm making the promise of child protection a reality. All right, who's a child? I bet you all think you know the answer. Don't ask your 12-year-old. She's telling you she's grown up. An 18-year-old, my son, is he a child? Yes, under immigration law, until you're 21, you are by statute a child. However, if you Google the term juvenile or minor or child and try to do legal research by Google, you're going to get very confused. Because in one set of regulations, the ones I have at the second part of the slide, those are the court's regulations. They define a juvenile as under 18. That's for the purpose of their juvenile dockets and special ameliorative procedures. But a minor might also be used, in this case it's under the age of 14. That may be for purposes of perfecting service on the individual or for whether they need a um, background check or fingerprinting. So rather than doing research by Google or word searches in Lexis or Westlaw, please use our materials. They're all available for you online or by phone call to us. We will share them with you or point you exactly where to look. I just wanted, I know how lawyers do research. We tend to want to just look and you're going to find you might be misdirected. For our purposes, a child is a child until they're 21. But this statute does have the age 18 cutoff for the initial classification. And this is a very important definition. It's called unaccompanied alien child. Lately, we've noticed the court has been calling it UC, or unaccompanied child, dropping the word alien. I guess they figure everyone in immigration court is an alien. They're wrong. So far since August, um, just on the safe passage screenings, we found two US citizens who were placed in removal. And you're saying, well, how can that be? Well, if you have a parent or a grandparent who is a US citizen, you may have citizenship in your blood. So in one case, we found that the child was born to a US citizen father abroad in Honduras and that child is a citizen. We brought it to the attention of ICE counsel and she immediately <coughs> said it is incumbent on us, it is our duty to make this further investigation. We will suspend this case and terminate if necessary. But if the lawyer had not been there, the child did not know that he was a US citizen. His father had abandoned him when he was quite young. You may be a citizen of another country sitting in this room. My favorite is to ask you, anybody got a grandparent from Ireland? Do you know you have a claim to an Irish passport? Go for it, then you can work anywhere in the EU. All right, here's the magic of this. Under regulatory interpretation, it's not published in regulations, but in guidance documents, again, much of immigration law is non-transparent. It's like a lot of areas of law, and administrative law, it's gonna be advisory memos. This advisory memo tells you that a child who is apprehended alone, even if later reunified with the parent. So they might have mom or dad living here, or both mom and dad living here. They've been released from custody to mom and dad. They're still an unaccompanied alien child for the purposes of procedure and qualifying for certain treatment. Also, they turn 19, they turn 20, they're still an unaccompanied alien child.